I will be. <laughs> I'll be in a ball game. We're starting. Time. Yeah, we're going. Know. We're going, Nora. Uh, welcome to the <laughs> Delling Pod with me, James Delling Pod. And I know I always say I'm excited about this week's special guest, and I am. I really am. Even though she was last week's special <laughs> guest and the week before special guest, it's Laura Perrins. <laughs> Laura, I think this is a really good idea. What? The, the feedback I'm getting, and I think you're getting the same, is that our listeners love coming to this place for a sign of hope. It's like we should call it "You're Not Alone." That should be the name of this. It's a, it's a safe this, space. It's a safe space from the lockdown. Yeah. From people, because I think there are so many. No, you go on. From people, there are so many out there. Spaces. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I imagine you're getting really pleased at the moment that, that we've been let, the lockdown has ended and, and it's been replaced by this complete freedom, hasn't it? We're all, we're all free to roam wherever we want and shop where, and, and drink where we will. Is that right? I, have you been a good boy, James? What tier are you in? Have you been behaving yourself? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm tier, uh, tier two, is it? You didn't even check. To see what you're allowed to do, right. what you're allowed to do. It's such, it's such <laughs> utter wank. Uh, um, it, it, I mean, it really is. But isn't this lockdown in name only, um, or sorry, the lockdown not in everything ex except the name? Uh, yeah. I mean, calling them tier one, tier two, three, tier three doesn't alter the fact that most of us are actually in a worse place, I think, than before this latest lockdown started. We're actually, you know, less free. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That is true. I, I mean, it's so many different things. So you'd have to go to before the stupid. So the best time was August. I think they were probably the fewer restrictions. But I, I do have a confession to make, James, because I have fallen into the trap that I think Dead-Eyed Hancock and the rest of them wanted to do. And that I was punching the air that I was in tier two because I, 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 they've given me back this little bit of freedom. And, and it's wrong to do that. But that is what I did, James. That's what I've been reduced to. And it's wrong. They are but, so clever. But, the, what, you know, I knew that I shouldn't be delighted about the fact that I'm in here too and that I can just do, well, uh, tweaking a few rules here and there. I will be able to go out for a Christmas drink with the moms because we'll have to have a business meeting. You have to have a business meeting. Yeah, yeah uh, very important. A very important business meeting. So um, I am, but that, that's what they, that's, that's the point. But I mean, if you live in Manchester, right? I mean, if you live, if you live up north, it's unbelievable that they have closed all the pubs. I mean, if you, and, and we, you know, I say we try and keep it light, but I mean, it, it, there's no light at the end of the tunnel if you're a landlord and you put your heart and soul into this, into this bar, and now they've told you to shut down at the busiest and most in, important time of the year, right? And I mean, I think there's two things about it. It is first of all, and I was saying again to, to my co-editor, it, it's not that you argue on the numbers. This is this is evil and wrong. They're destroying people's livelihoods. Um, they're destroying people's social life. But I also don't think if you want to argue it on a utilitarian basis, which I rarely do, I mean, everyone's just gonna get tanked up at home, right? I mean, people are just going to get drink in to their tiny houses and flats at home and have like, you know, uh, at least, you know, six people, maybe 10 people. The neighbours aren't going to call the police anymore. I don't think that's going to necessarily happen because so many people will be doing it. And even the true believers are probably thinking, oh, yeah, they really have, they've stitched us up like a kipper here. And you're just going to have loads of house parties if, instead of something that will be slightly more spaced in, in the pubs. So I don't even, yes, it's but, totally immoral, it's also insane. I fear though, Laura, that even that is part of the, a part of the sinister campaign. I mean, we are, as you say, we are being treated like prisoners. We are being given, you know, you're going to, you're going to get your rations back or you're going to get slightly improved rations for good behaviour. And we are being conditioned to act in accordance with the government's government's will and I, I i wonder whether even with christmas they know they know that we are going to we are going to break the rules because mm -hmm. it's christmas and, and how dare they impose these rules on us but 
that in itself will be part of the government's the government's plans. You, you know that they what what they're banking on, I think, is that if they grant us a little bit of of licensed dissent, yeah. Yeah. then it will stop the bigger reaction, which is what they deserve and what we need to do. I mean, there needs to be a massive public backlash, not a kind of not dribs and drabs of petty rebellion. OK, so the, 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 the massive public backlash, I mean, for, well, first of all, they haven't given dribs and drabs, really, if you're living in tier three. I mean, if you cannot go out at all, you know, you a restaurant, right? even a coffee shop, all hospitality is closed. Is, is that right in tier three? At all in uh, the entire, do you know what? In the entire month, I don't want to dignify them with, yeah, with, by know, taking it seriously. But, but but you know the thing is, if you live in tier three, it is serious. You cannot go to your local pub, even with your wife, right? So that they they never mind the mixing of the bubbles, blah blah blah. We don't want social mixing. You can't even go with your brother. You can't even go with your adult kids if they still live in the house. You know, all socialising must be done inside. So that that's what they've done. It is. And now that I'm thinking about it, it really, it, it really is wicked. And then in terms of the pushback, so again, I think it's our third week doing it, and we always say to ourselves, where, where is the pushback coming from? I mean, it's this, this is really big. Closing pubs coming up to Christmas, that is, that's a really big deal in in Britain. And but again, Sorry. what will the pushback be? And and I said on Twitter, only if in a collective way, the pubs o- say we are going to open. We are going to open, um, but of course it has to be collectively right. They can't pick, otherwise they can just revoke the license of one or two. Um, and people are people can come and they can do their whole COVID, you know, secure. And we'll only say do families to cover them because they will have to do that, James. We believe that this is actually safer than people congregating at home. This is what, if, if it was me, this is what I would do. You get your alliance together. You get in touch with all the public, other pubs, especially in your area and say, right, this is what we're doing. We are opening. We're going to announce we're opening on whenever it is the third. We're doing our COVID secure. We're only letting people in from the same house. We might even reduce the numbers. But this is this is what we were doing. It's an act of civil dis- disobedience. You want to come and shut us down? Shut us down. But oh, Republicans are so that. they're so enthralled to the licensing system. That's the problem. Yeah. This is where. The, the things that things that before Laura, things that we accepted as part of the necessary um, regulations of of a civil society, things like that pubs needed a license before they could serve alcohol. These seemed innocuous things at the time, or at least uh, historical hangovers from a, maybe from the I don't know when licensing started. Was it was it in the in the war? Or was it before? But we sort of accepted them as a sort of a, a fair sure. and necessary thing. Sure. Suddenly. Yes. They're starting to realise that all mm. these things are actually that we don't have freedoms. We've never have had these freedoms. It's just that up until now, the state has been less in a, enforcing them aggressively. But yeah. suddenly we find, no, if you want to have a pub business and you've got lots of customers who are desperate to come, even yeah. then you cannot serve alcohol just because the government on a whim decides mm. that you can't because of it. It wants to it wants to bolster its <laughs> It, it wants to double down or treble down on its on its unconscionable policy of 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 treating a something that is no worse than than bad seasonal flu, and then yeah. want to transform it into something the equivalent of um, of of uh, 1918, 1919, which it certainly ain't. Well, it's, it's terrifying. It it is terrifying, but. Again, it's only in terms of turning the tide. You, you, all we can do is, is I keep saying to myself, you know, look, looking back on other precedents, other big movements that have, were small in the beginning, say, and then suddenly switched. Because it was rarely, yeah, know. you know, a, a parliamentary vote, say, that ended something. Or, or I mean, again, I'm sorry, you know, if, again, the most obvious example is the civil rights and the Vietnam War in, in America. And that was all a massive groundswell. It was the protests that came first until the inevitable political surrender then comes years later, right? That was years in the making. Um, so it, 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 it well, it, it, it may, and, you know, it may well be that something similar is needed here, but at the moment, everything is just, it's so split across, right? This, it, it's what, I mean, I think the, 
the opposition is is sort of wide, but it isn't deep enough, you know, where you, you need it collectively together, but it, it's difficult and you need more public groundswell. Somebody from Manchester, I mean, I don't have a, oh, that's the doorbell. I don't have a map in front of me. Oh, we're gonna, can I get that quickly? Sorry, Jay. That's a very traditional door, but of course you can. It, it adds like to the excitement of the podcast. I'll be very, very quick. You can talk to your people. Um, hello, lovely, lovely podcast, vidcast viewers. Um, what have I got to say? Now, I'm going to save it for Laura. I think that's fine. Um, yeah. La, la, we're la, live. La, 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 la. <laughs> Well done. Yeah. Uh, uh, Laura, I wanted to say to you, if you want to get really, really depressed, and I know you're always looking for an opportunity, just have a look at the, um, what, what do we call it? Yeah, it's a kind of video debate I did oh, on yeah. the internet yesterday with um, David Vance, who's great. Yeah. Um, um, Godfrey Bloom, who, who, is, who is great. And Andrew Bridgen, MP. Oh. who I used to think was was great and who was completely and utterly shit the bed. I mean, you know, you would not want to sleep on that mattress anymore. It is absolutely awful. It was so embarrassing. And Andrew Bridgen was a, was a hero of mine in as much as I, I, I used to do this thing when one was still able to travel freely and stuff. I used to go for, I, I got a, a House of Commons pass okay. and I used to go and hang out with, with, with the sort of sounder MPs. One of them was Pretty Patel, who I thought at the time was 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 great, you know, kind of heir to Thatcher. One of them was Jacob Rees-Mogg, you know, he gave me the most fantastic interviews. And Andrew Bridgen was my was my go-to guy because he was what, as you know, he was one of the what are they called, the Spartans. He he stood yeah. firm on on Brexit. He wasn't, but also talking to him, it it, it was very very clear that he genuinely understood where well thatcherite values i suppose because i mean conservatism it's a it, it depends on who's defining it doesn't it but but i think what you and i mean by con sound conservative values andrew bridgen a self self-made man in mm. a, a a sort of proper working class constituency understood the importance of stuff like lower taxes personal responsibility um minimal state spending and so on and it was so embarrassing. He just buys in or appeared to buy in to every government shibboleth on, you know, mm -hmm. number one, he thinks that the coronavirus is 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 Ter an unprecedented thing, yeah. a terrible thing. Uh, he thinks that the government's response is is proportionate and wise. Uh, and, and, and when you mention things like T cell immun immunity. He 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 laughs knowingly, you know, like ha ha ha, you know, that, like like it's some wacko fringe theory. Yeah. I mean, yeah. T cell immunity. It's just it's not yeah. a wacko thing. And 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 he was totally on board with the idea that the only way, the only way you can deal with this with this virus is is a vaccine, because I mean that's how we always deal with viruses, isn't it? Actually, no, it's not, Andrew. No. You no. You've got Rare. decades Rare. of history to show. Yeah. And, so, and the viruses, um, were, yeah, I mean, vaccines are for really, the really, really serious stuff as well, like polio, right? Things that will leave you okay. permanently disabled, not ah, very bad that, flu. So that that's the kind of the straw man or the, the the dodgy argument he used. You know, well, there was a vaccine for polio. Are you saying? Are you saying that you didn't want a vaccine for you would? Did you take the polio vaccine? Well, as Godfrey pointed out, yeah, you yeah, um, know. Polio is a serious, a serious disease. Coronavirus just ain't. It yeah. just ain't. I mean, you can get it bad, but it's but it that's that you're unlucky. Ninety nine point yeah. what five percent of cases, you're you're going to be fine. Anyway, I was only mentioning that to you um, because to sort of reinforce the point that Parliament is not our friend. That our, no. our elected representatives are going to do absolutely sod no. all to get us out of this mess. They will. Um, in fact, there's yeah, they will only do something if they have, if they think they're threatened, right? So they'll either lose their seats, um, that they have stacks of constituents emailing them all the time saying, you have to change this or I'm never voting for you again. Um, unless, yeah. they, unless they are threatened in a way they actually care about, then they yeah. don't care. And, and it may well be that 
again, some of them, they've either been got at, right, by by the crew. So they're just holding the line. Um, they're true believers. That's the other thing. And uh, or, or unfortunately, there may also be an authoritarian streak. This is the pro- this is the problem, right? On um, with some people on the right. So you'd expect that from people on the left, or at least some people on the left. I don't know where all the libertarians and the li- classical liberals have gone. They they well, I can't, they can't be found. But um, there, you you may well have an authoritarian streak on the right, and especially because it's combined with a conservative government, and they're just in denial that this this could be done to them by a conservative government. Who are just thinking. You know, well, I'll just go along with it. I mean, what does he have to suffer personally anyway? His his pension will be fine, right? His salary is fine. I mean, that that is part of the problem. I think that I think the, the the public sector should take a a, a massive pay cut to the, certainly the equivalent of the pay cut the private sectors experience, and obviously that would include MPs. The, this is the problem, Laura. One of them that that there are a lot of people out there with no skin in the game. They're, yeah. they're, 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 they're all right, Jack, and they're mostly in the public sector, which is in league with the government. I mean, look yeah. at how look, look at how Rishi Sunak, the chancellor, has completely failed to stand up to the public sector in this latest spending round. Yes. He, it, it's as if as but, if as if we can easily afford this stuff at the well, time when we've experienced the biggest drop in GDP in 300 years. Literally off the charts, because I saw a chart last night on it, and, you know, it has your GDP. And this is, they had to sort of lengthen the chart GDP was was, 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 was so far down. And the thing is, they intended this drop in GDP. So th- this is what people, oh, no, well, so, so this is what I wrote about today when, when the spending review came out yesterday with kind of numbers that nobody can understand, really, right? You're talking yeah, yeah, yeah. What, 340 billion, was it, they're going to spend this year? I, I, I can't even, I have it in front of me, you know, and then there's, but they're, yet they're still going to borrow, and they're still going to, 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 you know, raise, of course, the pay of doctors and still, nurses. But, still but, building oh, HS2, which yeah, you don't need. Yeah, uh, and then you have, and then you have the oh the foreign the foreign aid round, you know, and 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 you have the the likes of Tim Montgomery and all the rest of them. Sort of, can I have my couch? I need to sit down now. I can't believe they've cut foreign aid. I'm pretty neutral on foreign aid. I could be convinced either way. I know that you may well say it, it it's corrupt, but but my point was no. If you supported either lockdown, you don't get to come along and start bitching. Now, when the cuts start start falling, which we assume they eventually will, you know, don't yeah, start yeah, yeah. to me when you must have known there will be consequences down the line to this insane splurging, first of all, of everybody's money to pay people to stay at home and do nothing. Right. Mm-hmm. And then also. Um, uh, uh, you, you know, b- bailing out various businesses and borrowing insane levels of, of money. And then, oh, we have to make a minor cut in, on, on, in foreign aid. Well, you know, you were on the front of the line on that first lockdown, as I remember, Tim, thinking it was all very reasonable. So don't come crying to me now. And don't bother telling well, me that never thought this could happen. And it wasn't foreseeable. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. I mean, what did you think did of I- that? Did I read it right? I, I think the figure we were given for the the cost. As, mm. I, I love the idea that I love the idea that the cost of okay. COVID is this is this thing that's written on a stone tablet, yeah. which has been uh, handed down from heaven, and that there was no avoiding this cost. This cost just appeared. Yeah, um, yeah. Actually, actually, this was entirely uh, within the in the government, and I think it was. 550 billion now okay so 550 billion being being spunked against the wall absolutely no purpose whatsoever on on incredibly dodgy ppe equipment contracts for 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 favored cronies of government ministers Mm. on on just track and on on matt cox ridiculous track track and trace thing thing. i'm gonna do it in a minute but go on um so all this stuff 550 billion now the Total saving to the exchequer, I think, by or rather to the taxpayer, because mm. that's ultimately who's paying for this stuff, 
by reducing the G, uh, the, the uh, ring fence foreign aid spending from 0.7 percent of GDP to 0.5 percent yeah. is five billion. So um, uh, it's a, a fraction yeah. of the 550 billion. Well, now, but, but here's 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 the thing. But you, 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 I'll just make this point. So. What was the story that we heard yesterday? It was mainly from the five prime ministers, five ex-prime ministers yeah, yeah, yeah. who were all yeah, outraged, yeah. Tony Blair yeah. and David Cameron, about, about this betrayal of, of our brethren overseas who, who, who so badly needed things like a Chinese language <laughs> translation of Shaun the Sheep, for example. And, and, you know, there will be no new Ethiopian Spice Girls without our foreign aid budget. But right, right. Look, here's the thing. So you've got... Blair, Brown, Cameron, um, the rest, lining up to say what a tragedy it is. You've got wets like Tim Montgomery. I mean, I wish there was a stronger word than wet to describe. No, well, we'll let, let's keep it. Like, let's like, keep like, it clean. Okay. Let's yeah. It okay. Clean. Okay. No. No. Oh, well, I, I won't keep it clean. But <laughs> I, I worry greatly that okay, there are sort of hardcore street fighters like you mm. and me, but all the politicians and all the Pretty much, I would say 90, 99% of the conservative commentariat, let alone the general commentariat. I mean, you know, it, but even the right wingers have fled the field. They are focusing on the least relevant aspect yeah, of, the, of the story, You're which right. is that yeah. Britain is in a complete mess. And yeah. all they're focusing on, yeah, but it's not nice. What about all the, what about our international reputation? As though anyone, any normal person gives a shit about this. Nobody th thinks this. And yet, if you listen to the BBC yesterday, uh, yeah. this was the main story. And and the fact well, that we are epically screwed was was yeah. neither, was neither nowhere to be seen. I mean, I guess you could just say it's another classic deflection, right? I mean, they, it's like somebody has come in and set your entire house on fire. Your house yeah. is now being engulfed in a massive inferno, okay, yeah. but there's a leak in your dog's kennel and everybody is over the dog's kennel going, oh my God, you know, there's the, 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 the a leak in, 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 in this part of your garden. What are you going to do? And you're like, but hang on, the, um, oh my kids are stuck in the house and my, it's an inferno. Like, no, 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 that's not what's important. What's, what's important is, is, is this little problem over here. So I can only what's get- the dog, What's the dog's name? Oh, well, my dog, <laughs> my dog is no, no, the, 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 the dog in the kennel. I mean, I, I'm, I'm moved by this story already no, and I don't no, see no, why no, not. It's just, yeah. it's people, just... people should care about the dog. More, never mind the house, never mind the family, yeah, the human family in the house. What really matters is uh, the dog in the, in the leaking roof kennel. I know, and of course, actually, I've, I mean, of course it is a percentage of GDP, but the point is there was hardly any GDP last year, right? The, the government specifically crushed productivity. The productivity meant people coming together. And then if you had people together, we were all going to die of COVID. So it's just, I mean, you, I wouldn't be surprised if, of course, some genius spinner in there, we can't blame Cummings anymore, said, well, I know what we're going to do to deflect from the fact that we've burnt the house down. Let's put in the foreign aid. Let's put in the foreign aid cut. Because that's yeah. what will... That's what gets, oh, that's what'll get the right. left angry, and that's what will get the likes of Tim Montgomery angry, and then everybody will just argue with with themselves and miss the fact that there's a forty six, there could be a forty six bill that will have to be filled by either tax rises or or cuts to public spending. <coughs> well, it ain't going to be cuts to public spending, is it? Because no. they seem to be addicted to to, to doing all that. I, I, um, I, it's insane. I mean, it's just it, the numbers are. <laughs> it, 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 they can't. You, no one can really comprehend, you know, the, the billions that are involved. I don't even know how they can they can do it, you know. But okay, they, Laura. The, <coughs> one of the things I've I've got, I've got to do over the next, rather than making extra bonus podcasts, vidcasts with with, with you, although it's always <laughs> such a delight. What I'm supposed to be doing, what, what I don't want to be doing, because I, I I hate hard work, but I, I'm, I'm much happier doing this. But what I'm supposed to be doing is writing the um, the outline for my first book in a very, very long time. Okay. And, uh, and I'm, I'm going to be talking about, you know, 2020 and all the shit that's happened. But, and there are so many strands leading up to this. I mean, you know, we can talk about the Great Reset and all that, but that's just, that's just, just part of it. But 
another example of, of, of the way the, the things that made this year possible, the things that made the government able to do all the bad things they're doing now mm. is the weakness, the weakness of our media. I mean, the mainstream media doesn't do its job at all, hasn't done its job for ages. But even even all those I'm thinking of the plethora of allegedly conservative, straight right wing, straight free market websites. You know, we know their names. And yeah. they churn out these articles every day. And I think they're probably financed by rich, sort of conservative, libertarian leaning donors. Yeah. But actually what they put out is at best bland centrism and sometimes even worse. I mean, I, I can't remember on one of the sites there was a piece the other day by by somebody agonizing over how to counter the proper the outrageous notion that vaccines are bad for you. And you know, so they're taking the side of the establishment. I, apart from your website, Conservative the Woman, book. the Conservative yeah. Woman, uh, the critic is fighting a good game. Yeah, I the mean, there's, there's yeah. the Breitbart obviously is 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 Breitbart. But yeah, where is where is the right wing? Where are the voices of the right in this country? Okay, well, I, they're, I think they're nowhere to be found. I think the, I mean, the media, you could do a whole part. I mean, the media, both the main channels and then, as you say, dripping down to the broadsheets and then, you know, the, the, the websites. I mean, the media are a huge problem. I, I don't know, pick any, in terms of, I actually did a, yeah, I did a piece on this. It's not the stories. So we complain about, say, we're watching Newsnight or we're watching whatever. And we look at them, we go, this is so unbalanced. I mean, they've chosen yeah. this guy and that guy, and then you get set up. And I'm sure you've had this yourself. You get the media call, and you're like, should I really do this? Because I know I'm just being set up for the, to be the punch bag, right? Yes. And they set, up, they set up the debate in such a way with very clever wording where you kind of end up defending fascism, right? They may well have invited you on, say, to talk about free speech, but they'll run loads of clips, say, of like some genuinely, we all agree on fascist. And then they go, so Laura Heron, do you think Mr. Fascist should be able to be, you know, and you're like, um, uh, well, so that's the first problem, but it, it's just how the, 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 the stories are presented. But James, the big bias comes in the stories they never cover. That the stories that are left on the cutting room floor, and this is particularly the case in America, where it's, I mean, criminal levels, I mean, the media there are, are just a pack of gangsters, basically. Um, but the stories they choose not to cover, I think especially, I would say, I mean, before this blew up, I'd be more interested in culture, big cultural stories that they just bury, you know, that never see the light of day. Um, they're the stories that really you should you, you, that's where the real bias comes in. So you, they could be giving you stories. Say you could, you could turn on your TV instead every night, and instead of every night there were there were seven hundred deaths. Give me the suicide toll. Give me the amount of people unemployed. Give me the up close and personal interviews with the old person who hasn't been able to leave her house in four months, and we're all in tears about that. And you would you would switch the narrative so quickly with say three or four days of that it, you would be talking a completely different story oh, oh, oh. so miss miss yeah okay, I, i've got another example yeah um, imagine imagine if imagine if uh the elections the presidential elections yeah in the united states imagine for a moment if they'd been stolen using stuffed ballots yeah. and voting machines which had been mm. programmed to actually convert mm. the votes of the Demo uh, of the Republican candidate to the Democrat uh, candidate. Can you imagine the, how the media would be excited over a story like that? I mean, it, it would be absolute dynamite, wouldn't it? Well, and if there was if there was solid legal evidence, and if there was there was endless testimony from various witnesses, and you got had experts able to prove yeah, that yeah, the algorithms yeah, had been. Yeah. Imagine, I mean. The media would be all over it, wouldn't it? I mean, yeah, it'd be yeah, front page yeah, of the Telegraph. Yeah, democracy, um, you know, the, so, so even again, that, I mean, so the, the electoral story in the US is a classic, is a classic case. So again, even if you were to remain neutral on it, which I know you aren't, but say I'm a little bit wetter than you are on it, okay? And I'm like, look, li yeah, I don't really know what happened, okay? Because I'm not there. I just wasn't in Michigan, okay? I don't know what happened. But like... The, the, first of all, they call it for Biden. There's no such office as president-elect. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't exist, right? No, actually, there is. 
Check my Twitter, yeah. my Twitter yeah. handle. No, I love President it. elect James no. Dalingpole says, stop that. But they actually right. say things like, when they say we shouldn't even, even ask the question, was there some dodgy voting? It's like, you're a journalist. And as I said, for the previous four years, you, you pushed this garbage Russian collusion story for four yeah. years. You terrorized the American government on it. My, my most, uh, the story I buried myself deepest in ever in my, in my blogging career was the Justice Kavanaugh story, where you waved around a 30-year-old yearbook like it was a murder weapon, right? To try and destroy yes. this man's nomination. You had probably a thousand journalists on that case. Do you know what they would have done? They would have gone, sent him to everybody he went to school with, everybody he went to university. Did you ever see him? Did you ever see him even touch a girl the wrong way, right? They literally waved this yearbook around like a murder weapon. The, the Covington kids, the guy, the 17 year old who they tried to destroy because he was wearing a hat at a pro life yes. march. That school had yeah, to be. It was, a, it was a red hat. That school had to be had closed a on for, a it. Week, for a week because of because of the way the media. And I remember watching that story. I remember watching it literally live on Twitter. It started to grow and grow and grow. And I remember thinking to myself, hmm, this looks suspicious. But you know, someone even raises a question that maybe people who people were voting that shouldn't have been voting or that they were dodgy machines that actually it turns out they weren't made in Canada, they were made in Venezuela. No, no. If you even ask the question, you're a conspiracy theorist. You're worse than that. You're, you're a danger to democracy. So you don't even have to take a position on it. The only position you have to take in is have the media, how do they treat the stories? The stories they want you to get hysterical about. They egg you on, and the stories they want buried, they bury deep. They bury deep. Yeah. And the, I think the American media are worse, worse for it than the British media, but it's not. British media oh, aren't great. Right, right. uh, let's just indulge ourselves for a moment. Just imagine, imagine the epic reckoning that is going to take place mm. if somehow... If somehow Trump manages to, because you, you, you realize you realize there is a, yeah. You see, even even you're laughing. No, I, I am. I'm very much an analyst. I'm going to give you my fat, my Trump fantasy now in a minute. I bet you've never heard that, but I'll let oh. you finish. Go on. Okay. No, no, no. I, 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 I definitely want the to hear Trump fantasy. The ending to this film, um, the ending to this film, uh, James, mm -hmm. is Justice Kavanaugh writes the majority opinion in the Supreme Court, right? And it kind of goes along the lines of. The media don't the media don't get to choose who the president is. Why? It was only a few years ago when I've had some personal experience with how the media works. And then just uh, who the Clarence Thomas co concurs because you know Biden Biden basically told or called Clarence Thomas a rapist at his confirmation hearing, and the VP um, Camilla Harris she basically called Kavanaugh a rapist at his confirmation hearing. So that's. That's the dream this ending is. of the film, James. Yeah, okay. You want that? okay. Yeah. I think there's going to be lots of American viewers who are going to be just smiling to, to themselves. But look, let, let's consider for a moment the a bit more the outrageousness of what's gone on. So you've got, correct me if I'm wrong, you've got Michael Flynn. Oh, Michael yeah. Flynn, who was one of the very few stand-up guys right at the beginning of the Trump administration because he had great difficulty finding finding people who were actually genuinely on sure. board with this program. A lot of them were just kind of he going along to get along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, Rex Tillerson, for example, was never a good Secretary of State. He was he was part of the blob. He was he was always going to be a disastrous mm -hmm. pick. Uh, um, Mad Dog Mattis, <laughs> who you would think, having been a sort of gung-ho Marine, you know, the sort of guy who doesn't duck under shell fire when he's taking the bridge or whatever at Fallujah. Yeah, he's fine in a combat situation, but he's actually part of the military industrial complex, which wants more of the wars that President Trump sure. doesn't want. So again, you know, a lot of these, these senior military figures are Democrats who want to get on the, on the military industrial gravy train. They want more war. Trump yeah. is against war. That's why, that's why the ordinary soldiers love him. Sure. The senior military, not so much. Yeah. Um, so Michael Flynn was a, was was would have been his rock, and the left knew this, and they destroyed him. They they ruined this man's career. I think for 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 these alleged conversations he'd had with the with the with the Russians, he'd somehow broken the Logan Act. 
Well, well excuse yeah, yeah, yeah. me. Yeah, they they, what, they swung what, around the Logan Act. Yeah, I know. Yes. What What has Biden been doing? What have and all these the President Elect Biden been doing? He's not. He's not definitely going to be the next president, yet he's been acting as if he is. He's yeah. surely in breach of the Logan Act. And I, 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 I think a lot of his staffers are as well. Now, here's the thing. The really exciting thing I'm told by some of my, because as you can imagine, I've been I've been lurking in the darker recesses of the internet. Sure. I mean, I'm trying to find, like, trying to find cherry picking, if you like, my company. I've been try, I've been hanging out with people who who, like me, believe that Trump still has a chance, that this election was definitely stolen, and it is essential that Trump wins for the future of Western civilization. Mm. And what some of them have been, have been telling me is that Trump, well, he, we, we know that he knew that this was going to happen. We know yeah. that he, he knew that the Dems were going to try and steal the election by the mm. foulest means. Mm. But that actually he kind of um, put them in a position where they had deliberately put them in a position where they where they overreach themselves on such yeah. uh, an outrageous scale okay that, that 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 if he wins he can really really throw the book at them that that there's going to be jail time for a lot of these people and deservedly so because this is the this is the, the the epic confrontation the armageddon if you like that we've all been waiting for that that it's been building for decades this 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 battle between left and right yeah. And I think it's coming to a head. You're, you're a warmonger, and... James. <laughs> you're... I'm no, a... I think you're a warmonger. No, I. No, funnily enough, funnily enough, I think yeah. there will be a war if this, if this is this is not resolved well, peacefully now. Well, I think one thing that the Democrats f frequently do do is what is overreach. And again, running back to my favorite story, so that's what happened with Kavanaugh, right? Because if they stuck to the original story, they'd have been okay. You might remember as well as I did. Once they started bringing in the gang rape and the creepy porn lawyer of Ante and all that stuff, even I knew in my heart, I was like, ah, they've done the classic Democrat mistake. They have done overreach. And that's what killed them on that. Um, and, and it may well be that you're right in the analysis and this, this is this is overreach for them as well. But the other, again, more depressing way of thinking about it, and I've, I've seen this really- I don't. Well, in a way, you could bring it back with Cummings as well. When you live in a sort of authoritarian, fascist state, whatever you want to do, the elite break the rules, right? And they let mm -hmm. you rules because it's part of how they humiliate you, right? So the Democrats are t saying, yeah, I mean, look, we can steal an election. And there's nothing you can do about it. They're there's like they're like part of your humiliation. So Cummings can go here, there, and everywhere into his castle, and the same creepy guy, Professor Ferguson, with his threesome or whatever it is. They now he, although he's back on stage, isn't he? He went off and then he's back on stage. Oh yeah, no, he's still he's still very much part of the yeah, scene. Yeah. And then you've got so that that is part people of people like Governor Governor Newsom of California doing the same yeah. thing. Absolutely cavalier. They so, are like dogs licking their balls. They do it so because they can. It's, it, 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 they, they want to be caught. Same as Hillary Clinton and the server, right? Most other people would be doing serious jail time if they did what she did, namely had her own private server while being Secretary of State, right? Well, crooked but, Hillary, yeah, exactly. Okay. But she does it in plain sight, not because she's sort of stupid or whatever. That's part of the humiliation for the general public in that she's saying... I am I am above the law. You little people have to obey the law, but I am special, and Bill is special, and the rest of us are all special, and we can do whatever we want. And you, you guys, you're just gonna have to live with it. Laura, so I suddenly realise who you are. Uh, you're Katniss Ever. You're, no, you're Katniss Everdeen. Oh no, go I on. Want to, I want to see you in that special exploding dress that catches fire. Oh. How does it? How, how does the symbol work? What's the, what's the special symbol they all do you when they're fighting? The... No, you yeah. Have you not have you not seen? Oh my God! You don't know who Katniss Everdeen is? No, no. Well, okay. Well, when your kids are a bit older, you will you okay. will be exposed to this. So so I you just Google that. it afterwards. Just okay. it's it's uh, actually you will find that story very resonant, very right. resonant. It is about right. it is it is. How, yeah. It's called Hunger Games. You've heard of Hunger Games? Oh yeah, I wouldn't watch Hunger Games. The Hunger Games. James, I, I, no, you would. No, I boycott. No, you, you should. Mm. No, you should. Yeah, I've heard. I do like dystopians, but yeah, yeah. I mean, we're living what in. What do one. you watch? Films about 
flowers you, and horses. Or I, I, well, now and again I do. Um, I watch very little films. Honestly, it has to be really, really good. I'm very bad. I basically, if it was made after the 50s, namely the 1850s, I don't watch it anymore. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But a lot well, of... You are quite, you're quite old school, aren't you? It's anymore, James. It's about making political points. The last movie I think I watched was Terminator, the, the latest one, which I, I actually... I'm still emotionally traumatized from what from what they did to the Terminator franchise in that latest film. I I don't think I've gone back. Tell me, tell me. Oh my God! Okay, spoil it for me. Right. Okay, I'll try and keep it. I did a blog on it as well. So, first of all, they kill John Connor in like the first minute. Right. They kill John Connor. So so remember. So now I've forgotten the ones that. So I like one and two are obviously classics. Right. Terminator 1 and 2, greatest sci-fi movies perhaps ever, right? So all of the sacrifice that went into 1 and 2, namely sending Reese back in time, um, getting the mother out of the asylum, blowing up the whole factory, that was for nothing. He gets knocked off by a T-1000 as well, not even one of the better ones. He just comes up out of the water and like shoots John Connor, a kid John Connor. That was the first problem. The second problem is Sarah Connor, who's back in it, is um is just this bitter you know in so in one she's this very attractive but innocent you know waitress yeah. soon to be mom and then in in t2 she's she is um she's a warrior but like that still like a maternal wa- wa- warrior right she'll do anything to protect her son she's just now this bitter twisted uh individual just this just this terrible character right and you know who the savior is because it's not John Connor anymore. Oh, it's, it's not Arnie. No, no, no. It's this tiny, no, no, no. illegal immigrant from Mexico who's probably shorter oh, than... No. A, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> who's, like, who's like five foot one, first of all. So we were to believe that this five foot one girl from Mexico, who, by the way, shoots loads of law enforcement officers, wink, wink, um, is going to be oh. the leader of the free world, yeah. Whereas if you look back at one, oh yeah, and and then the the um, her protector, of course, is a female. I think half human, half Terminator, but also can like wear men's clothes, and it's basically practically you know not female. It's awful. And if you compare it to so in one, right, you had one also was a love story because Reese was always in love with, with Sarah Connor. And he, he says, I've seen them a lot, I travel through time for you, Sarah, right? And then they- You they, have seen them a lot, haven't you? Yeah, I have. And then they conceive, they conceive John. So he, he has, he, this, this, this paternal protector, this man is sent back through time to protect a mother and her child. Now we have a half man, half woman sent back through time to protect an illegal immigrant from Mexico. That, that was what they did to oh, Terminator. Thank you. Thank you for saving me, it, having to go it. and see that, that movie. Um, <laughs> I, 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 as a farewell thought, because I, I think we, we'll, just, we'll just keep doing these things because people love them anyway, and um, people need us. But as a farewell <laughs> thought, can I, can I, can I, oh, well, you, I, I imagine you haven't got Netflix, have you? No, we do. <laughs> No, we do. No. Nelson watches Netflix. Oh, you do? Okay, okay. No, we do. Have you seen, have you seen, <laughs> My top pick of the year. You're going to say Barbarians. Oh, what? What was I going to say? Oh, Barbarians. No. No, Barbarians is a bit shy. I mean, I mean, it's perfectly okay. I think I think the the Teutoburg Forest is a very interesting battle, and and Arminius is an interesting character. But yeah. but it was a bit it was a bit poor man's um, Last Kingdom. I thought it wasn't it okay. wasn't nearly as good as Last Kingdom. Watch to the lake. It is a okay. Russian-made drama. Yeah. It was made in. In 2018, okay. it is about a deadly viral outbreak. Oh. But but here's the interesting part. What the Russians get, what they get totally is the response of the government. And the government is much more dangerous than the virus. Yeah. And there is a particular, this will make your heart sing. I mean, it, 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 I, I promise you, it is one of the best moments of TV. It's the best hour of TV you will see this year. I absolutely guarantee okay, it. Okay. When you, when you get to episode five, just 
You can call me afterwards and just just say thank you, James. It is so <laughs> moving. It is exciting. It's kind of Tarantino-esque in its time structure. It it, it it invokes all these these Russian tropes, which you don't understand, but you kind of okay. think they're great because hey, Russia. Uh, yeah. It's it's a beautiful piece. So it's it's clever. It's moving. I mean, there's you know it's it, it's a bit racy in places. I, you know, I don't you know how comfortable you are with that, but it's good. It's really it, it's it, I'd say it's 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 certainly better than. Um, Chess girl becomes champion. Oh yeah, no, it's no, um, chess girl. Didn't which, which is nice. Which is no. Which is very nice in its way. But it's but to the lake is brilliant. Okay. Anyway, I well, I'm going to go. Yeah. Unless you want to say say say, no, say some interesting things to just, me. Just go. just you know, it may happen that Justice Kavanaugh writes that majority opinion. Okay, that's that may well happen. <laughs> oh. Shall we have no, Laura? If that happens, should we have should we have a special celebration? I might even see you in person and break all lockdown rules just so we can have a drink to and that. Just have a massive that... bottle of champagne. Well, I, yeah, I mean, that, sadly, I don't think it's going to happen, but, you know, hope springs eternal. Uh, I, yeah, I, I'll, I'll, you can have champagne. I'll have, I'll have gin. I don't, th I don't think champagne is a proper gin, a, a drink for a man. Oh, okay. I, I think it's a, girl's, well, it's, mm -hmm. it's a girl's drink. Well, that's okay. Yeah, girls, I, girls, I girls have a bottle to myself and you can... You can have whatever drink. I'll just be a, I'll just be a, just kind of a, yeah, a gin soaked, you know, yeah. kind of like Hogarthian it, character. It would be, I do, yeah. I do, I do fantasize about that happening, but I don't think it will. <laughs> no, I think it will, and I'm going to drink a drink to that, Laura. Thank you. Until our next podcast, which I hope will be very soon. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you, James. Bye. 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 Bye.